Do you feel that sometimes you make the same mistakes over and over again when you play badminton? Don't worry, you are not alone. And being aware of them will really improve your game. Hi, I'm Coach Kenya Sunshon, and if you want more videos on how to improve your badminton game, do consider subscribing to my channel. There are a lot of mistakes that players make on the court that can be avoided simply by being more aware that you are making them. Here are the top mistakes of badminton players. A common mistake would be the grip, how we grip the racket. First and foremost, we have to know what our resting grip should be. And it's very simple. You just hold it like you're shaking someone's hand. Okay? This grip is what we will be using more often. Running around, using our forehands. Most shots will be on your basic grip. When do you switch your grips? You only switch when you're about to hit a backhand. So I will be moving this way just to specifically show you if I'm hitting the shot towards that direction and I'm supposed to hit it with my backhand on the lower side, I put out my thumb on the flat surface of the racket just to help give that extra force for that backhand. So that's when you move for the backhand. Another grip is called the bevel grip. The bevel grip is in between the flat surface and the other side of the racket. So it's here, somewhere in between. And that is widely used for backhand, this side in a higher position. Why is it so important to have the grip correct? Well, it's simple. Badminton is such a fast game, every second counts. And when the shots are coming faster and your grip is wrong, tendencies are your return shot will be weak or short, therefore allowing your opponents to attack stronger. Okay? So, you, you can see people gripping their rackets the wrong way like, like this, like a fan handle. They can hit with it. Sure. I mean, you can hit with it even if your grip is wrong. But why do we want it correct? Simply because you want to be able to shift when it's time to put up your thumb, when it's time to put it down, it will be faster, more comfortable, and it makes you move with ease and with confidence. Another common mistake is being too risky. So, I mean, the common notion is that badminton uses a lot of wrist, but in actuality, there's a lot of control. Yes, we do it, we do use it a lot, but with a lot of control. You can't just go around like whipping your wrist here and there thinking that's the way it's being used and being played. Oftentimes, a lot of shots require you to just keep your wrist steady. For example, I am going to be taking a defense. Now, when I do take a defense, I cannot like flick my wrist. Once I do this and flick the wrist together with my defense, then automatically the shuttle will go slightly higher. And you don't want that because then your opponent will keep attacking back until they get the point. So what you want to do is have a controlled wrist. Pretty much the same when I get shots in front. It's not all about flicking the wrist. Sometimes you, you have to control it and just move it softly. You are also relying on the forearm to help you stay steady with your wrist. So that's what I meant when I say too risky, okay? Um, that's a very, very common mistake. Bad footwork is another common mistake made by newbies or beginners. That's why when I teach, that's what I put emphasis on, footwork. And I do it very often. Even with my advanced players, we still do footwork. Simply because you want to come to a point where you don't even think about it and you run with the footwork. So uh, a tip for badminton is that normally you end and take the shot and, and end with your dominant leg. So for example, I'm a right-handed uh, player, I would normally end with my right leg when hitting the shot. You would hardly see people doing this. This is more for tennis. 
okay? So, as much as possible, we kind of picture having a string attached to our arm and our leg. So, when we move. Of course, unless it's a shot, it's a shot that's close to our body, then you don't need to put out your footwork. But, please do work on the footwork as it is very important. It saves you a lot of energy. If your footwork is good and you can get to the shuttles and you can run back and move around, then you conserve so much, you know, uh, unnecessary wasted energy. A very common mistake is dumping off the weight. And I don't only mean for the heavier type of players, you know. Sometimes it's just when we do the footwork and we do the last step, we kind of like put all, all our weight to it. We should move lightly so we can get back faster. In any shot, whether you're doing a front shot, a side, the one behind, do your best to move as light as possible. Do not dump your weight on your dominant leg, like this, okay? Because if you dump, it will take a few seconds for you to be able to get back and bounce back for the next shot. Another common mistake is too much of the same shot. For example, I'm a smasher and I love to smash. So I cannot, based on what I like to do, I can't keep on doing it if it's not working. So for example, I love to smash, I just keep smashing. But then what will your opponent do? Your opponent will just anticipate your smashes and get ready and then try to put shots that will be harder for you. So it's all about variety. Badminton is a game of variety. So do not get stuck with your favorite shots or shots that you just simply um, are more confident to use or shots that you like to use. You have to have variety. So work on every aspect of your game. As much as you have a good smash, you also have to have a good defense, a good you know, movement and flexibility all around the court so you can shift or change at the last minute. So I'd like to stress on that, that do not, do not use too much of one type of shot. Yes, you can have, you know, a, a sort of like your favorite, but then you have to consciously make variety and give variety to your gameplay. Otherwise, it will be predictable. Otherwise, your opponent will wait for it and you will be the one running after the shots. Too much of a fancy shot or a trick shot is also a common mistake. Why? Simply because those trick shots, those fancy shots, they're just meant to deceive the movement of your opponent. But if you do it so often, it won't be as deceiving anymore. So I often tell my players, for example, I, I see this player, uh, you know, lo that love to use a certain fancy shot. I'll tell my player, just don't move as quickly, okay? It will be easier to anticipate if you use that fancy or trick shot too often. It only becomes effective if you use it like once in a while. At a time when your opponent didn't think you would, okay? So avoid using too much fancy shots. It may look good, it's really great, but then, you know, it takes a certain level to actually get it consistently to the other side of the court with good quality. So when you see those um, international players or good players do those trick shots, you know, shots like this, they don't do it in an entire game. They may do it once or twice. It will go in, it is nice, it is good, but do not use it too often. Last but not the least, overconfidence or lack of confidence. Most players can't seem to be in the middle of it. Others are way overconfident. And what don't we like about being overconfident? Overconfident only makes you become more careless. Since you're overconfident, you think you got it, then you didn't get the shot. So that's what we want to try and avoid. Do not be overconfident. Even when the shuttle is very high already in front and ready for you to kill it, do not be overconfident in thinking that it can never be returned. 
the smash can never be returned. Of course, it can be, sometimes through luck, sometimes through good defense, but it does happen. So never be overconfident in a game. And I always tell my players, never stop. Never stop until the shuttle is on the floor and somebody is getting the point already. Okay? So you have to keep moving and always in your ready position. Now, lack of confidence is also another problem. Majority of people starting and playing tournaments, especially when they're young, have that lack of confidence. We shouldn't lack confidence simply because we are up against another opponent who will have their own weaknesses. So it's only a matter of knowing how to use your strength and knowing how to cover your weaknesses. And so we stay in the middle ground. Do not be over and do not lack confidence. Let's stay in the middle ground. If you want to improve your strategy when playing singles or doubles, click on the videos you see on your screen. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can level up your game and be the next smashing success.